Jackie Alborella. Welcome to Gardening for Real People. Now, if you're one of those people that thought hostas were kind of boring and that there weren't really a lot of different varieties, wait till you see what we have on today's show. Rand Lydell has over 20,000 varieties of hostas, and each one is more beautiful than the next. You're going to get to learn all about them. On today's show, we're going to introduce you to the easiest and most beautiful perennial you could have in your garden, the hosta. We'll also give you a tip on how to keep the rabbits from eating your lettuce. And if you like those begonias that you have in your garden this year, we'll show you how to take a cutting and you can have the same ones next year. If you're like me, you might have a few of these things sitting around all summer long. I use them in the winter to store things in my garage, but in the summer they pretty much sit empty. Well, I found a use for them in my garden. I've got a terrible problem in my garden with rabbits eating just about everything. And although I fence things in like my beans, I don't want to have to put fences everywhere. My lettuce, I like to fill in holes in my beds here and there with them, so I, I can't put a fence around every single bed. Well, guess what? These work perfectly to keep the rabbits from munching on my beautiful lettuce. All you do is take one of these plastic containers, turn it over on top of the lettuce, and it keeps the bunnies away. It's heavy enough that the rabbits can't knock it over or knock it off, and the lettuce still gets plenty of light and plenty of water. So here you go. Here's a use for these crates in the summer. When I'm all done with them in the garden, I hose them off, and they're all ready to store my winter things. Container growing gets more. Blah, 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 blah. You know, hostas can add terrific color and lots of different textures to the garden, and they're also really pretty easy to take care of. At Eagle Bay Hostas, Rand Lydell has over 20,000 varieties. We visited him, and he told us all about what's happening in the world of hostas. How long have you been growing and working with hostas? Uh, about 20 years. Yeah. Uh, we and, used, and how we did used you start hostas with and landscaping hostas? long before that. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, uh, uh, we had a customer who had a difficult spot. We tried all the weedy ground covers like honeysuckle and ajuga that everybody tries, uh, and none of them worked. Uh, it was too wet. And I just suddenly decided, well, I've never killed a hosta. We'll try a, a, an old undulata hosta in there. And they exploded. And he said, I don't care what these are. Bring me more of them. And I said to my wife, who helps me with my business, we better pay attention here. There's something good going on I need to know more about. So Great. that kind of got me started. And how long have the gardens been here? Uh, the older part of the gardens we're going to see next uh, were started about 18 or 19 years ago. Uh, just as a demonstration for my customers to come right. see. Uh, this garden that we're walking through right now uh, is 9 or 10 years old. Tell me about this garden well, that's here. Well, we're right at the entrance to the gardens. Yeah, this is what you see when you drive in. And we made an attempt here not to have this formal. We could have used three concentric circles. And we have three hostas here. The, the little gold one in the front uh, is Golden Scepter. Uh, it is an all-gold tiara. Uh, the next one back is Halcyon. And the furthest back is Invincible, which is fragrant. Hostas seem to be real popular all of a sudden. I mean, are they more popular now than uh, they have been in the past? Well, they or? are here. Uh, like any plant, it's a question of availability. Uh, maple trees wouldn't be popular if there weren't any maple trees right. available. The reason we have the garden here is so that you can walk in and see mature plants. You don't have to wonder what that little thing in the container is going to look like three years from now. Uh, you can come and see it, take pictures, take notes, uh, and make intelligent decisions. Great. Now, is that pretty typical that a hosta will take three years to really reach its uh, full that's maturity? That's usually what we, what we think of. Some can take lots longer than that, and, and some of these things, I can almost feel the roots coming out yeah. when I put it near the ground. <laughs> uh, they grow so quickly. You yeah. know? Uh, they do have uh, a pretty much limited eventual size, though, and, and we can predict that. Okay. Uh, that does vary with the site, but we can pretty well right. predict that. And let's, as we move on to the next garden, tell me, what is a good site for hostas? I had put the stone walls up, and I wanted to do a demonstration garden with grasses, hostas, and daylilies. And there are varying light needs and, and site needs for those plants. We have about three hours of three and a half hours of sunshine coming in in the morning, but not enough in the afternoon for grasses. So I started looking at how the sun comes through these trees, and I noticed that there's a streak of light there at 2 o'clock, and over there a streak of light at about 3.30 that is actually about an hour and a half of light. Voila, five hours for my grasses. 
So we drew a line around there, Great. planted the grasses, did the hosses and the day lilies, and then the paths were whatever was left over. So that's wow. how we designed this. A, uh, it, that's it worked great. With, with the way nature provided. What kind of soil do hostas like? Uh, most of the most of the hostas prefer a very rich humusy soil with a constant steady supply of moisture, sort of like you give a rhododendron or azalea, uh, where they thrive, usually hostas thrive as well. Um, why don't we start over here and talk about the hostas that are in here? I'll point out some, some new ones that are really nice. Here's Patriot. We probably will see another one of those a little later on. And there's also a newer one, Minute Man, that's a little darker in the center. Zager's White Edge is a very white one. Little Hostas are really nice. Now, that's a full-grown little wonder. It's a Lockman hybrid. And uh, it's only a little over a foot across and yeah. probably won't get much bigger than that. Uh, on the other hand, we're going to look at some in substance over there, which can get 10 feet across. Wow. Uh, Innis Wood is very popular. It's a near yellow center on it. And... Uh, one of my favorites is Summer Fragrance. This one has a very nice fragrant lavender bloom. And I especially like it because at my height, it just comes near my nose, oh, you know, so and it smells like gardenias. But look at that beautiful plant. That is See how nicely formed that is. That It only took a couple of years after I planted it really? to, to fill out like this. And the foliage is gorgeous. Maybe I'll take one of those to this week's leaf show. There. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and the flowers are very pretty on it. And, and as we go along, I'm going to be talking a little more about hosta flowers because some of the old hostas had pretty, pretty awful looking yeah, flowers. They, uh, yeah. And I use a weed whip and I take them right off of there. Uh, <laughs> but some of the new hostas have got gorgeous blooms. Oh, we're, we're doing great. better and better with hosta flowers. Uh, and someday I predict you're going to buy a hosta because you like the blooms, not because you like the foliage. Okay. Uh, well, well, we'll hold you to that. <laughs> This is a beautiful one. This is, uh, there are, we have different kinds of hostas based on, on old hybridizing groups or species from the wild. Uh, that's a fragrant one. All the fragrant ones come from, a, from old August lily, which is properly known as Plantagenea, a species from Korea. Uh, th this one is Blue Shadows. Uh, Blue Shadows is a Tokodama. And isn't that beautiful foliage on that? It's it just is hard gorgeous. To, it's just hard to, hard to beat that looks of that. And it's very tough. If, uh, if you could touch that, you'd find that it's just like leather. Uh, oh, and well, it is. The slugs can't get this one. We have a lot of them that are slug resistant, and we actually see slugs going by here with a disappointed look on their <laughs> face. Uh, they know it's no use in even trying that. Uh, uh, this plant called Steady On uh, is from wild collected seed from Japan. Uh, it was sent through another person to me from Kinsey Watanabe in Japan. And if you look underneath, you'll see uh, sort of cinnamon colored stems on it yeah. uh, and beautiful glossy foliage. We can take this and use it as a, as a hybridizer's tool uh, by taking pollen from this and putting it on a streak breeder. I might get back uh, this plant with these nice little ruffled edges and a white margin on it. Oh, Imagine that beautiful wow. glossy plant with a white margin. So that's the kind of thing we're constantly looking for and working with to improve the way hostas work. And so hosta hybridizers kind of work together and exchange seeds That's and information. Correct. That's so absolutely that correct. There will be hybridizers here this weekend who I will be offering a few plants to because they've given me some nice things. Right. Uh, and our goal, uh, almost, almost universally, although there's a few exceptions, uh, is uh, among ourselves to actually improve this plant so that it's better all the time. The large leaf plants here are Sibboldi annas. Uh, this incidentally is a catalpa and it's it's got four glorious days when it blooms and then a week and a half of misery when it drops the blooms <laughs> over my hostas. So all this is not snow, this is my catalpa <laughs> shedding. Uh, and uh, these large leaf plants in here may be in a bit too much sun, but they require afternoon shade. Uh, they're Sibboldianas and if you put those in too much sun they, they bleach out. And you can see here yeah. a bit of what's happening. This, yep. this uh, if, you, if you note it, has got both uh, bleaching of the blue the blue, incidentally, while we're doing this, uh, is just a powder on the surface of the leaf. So if you give it too much sun, that will wear off and do this, uh, or, or melt off. Yeah. Uh, so wind, uh, wind and, and rain and sun uh, destroy these blue hostas. This is European ginger. Isn't that beautiful, glossy foliage? Beautiful. Uh, European ginger is so shade tolerant that I'll... That, that Francie hosta over there will actually grow over the top of it and it'll look beautiful under there in the wow. summertime. Uh, you can't quite grow it in the basement, but almost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, it requires very good steady moisture. So it's a good plant to use with hostas to fill little spots uh, and give you a slightly different texture look yep. uh, with your plants. And that's really what hostas are all about in the garden, isn't it? Primarily uh, the textures yes, we, and... We, 
we think that most people uh, find the most appealing part of the hostas in the subtle, cool varieties of color and the nifty textures. Uh, and when you see one, you may not you may not realize how good the texture uh, the possibilities are. But then when you see a whole group of them, you can begin to see that. And when we get in the West Garden, we'll see more of that. Okay. Uh, this little plant here is Peridot. This is one of our hybrids. Peridot is dark green, very slug resistant, uh, glossy, and it has another characteristic that I like very much. It still looks good in October. Yeah. Uh, and That's this one great. has near pink blooms that are short, just above the foliage. It's a joy to see it bloom. I bet. This is lunar orbit. In the sun, this becomes butterscotch in the center. And you can see the color starting to show there. Uh, the leaves become near round and puckered. We like puckered leaves, look really nice. Uh, it's very slug resistant, nice short lavender blooms. Uh, it's everything a hosta should be and what I, it's kind of what I epitomize when I, when I go to hybridize one. This is, this is kind of my, my thinking. Uh, next to it is a very neat species that grows on rock outcroppings in Japan. This is a hypoluca with white backs and white backs on a hosta to give it a kind of glow, nice little frilly edges and it's a, it's a nice plant. Hypoluca is a great species. The other plant in here that's worth noting is some in substance. We looked at a little one, we'll see some even smaller ones, but this is a big one. Uh, look at the individual leaf here. We're looking at a leaf, you can see by my hand, uh, I have fair sized hands, but that's not making much of a dent on that great big dinner platter sized leaf uh, and the leaves can become bigger. Uh, this plant is, it's, is it's, just a young one. Yeah. Uh, it's only about seven feet across. Uh, mature uh, summer substance hostas can get up to almost 10 feet. It's uh, almost prehistoric looking. It's, You're <laughs> like something you'd see in the dinosaur It's age. amazing. That's right. And, and sometimes you look at this and you think something, something large with teeth ought to be yeah. jumping out from under <laughs> right, or something. Right, you know, right. A lion would look yeah. good down in there. Uh, Green pie crust is a kind of historic hosta, and there's several in here that are worth looking at. Green pie crust has pie crusted edges. I've actually had an artist sit here and sketch this yes. because she liked it so much. Uh, that was done by the lady, Frances Williams, who the famous Frances Williams hosta is named after. And she did this back in the 50s when there wasn't much to work with, so it's quite an outstanding plant. The other one that's real nice here is Paul's Glory. This will become brilliant yellow in the center with blue green, deep colored edges. Beautiful. Uh, it's almost impervious to damage. Another one that looks good late in the summer. Uh, nice flowers. Everything is good about this. And look at that beautiful corduroy on the on the leaf. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I just love that corduroy Splendid. leaf. Well, that's the other big thing about hostas in the garden, too, is that uh, these are one of the plants that will go all summer and into fall and still look beautiful. Most will. Some of yeah. the older varieties, uh, unfortunately, a few of the newer varieties, yeah. One of the reasons why you want to take time and see a garden, yeah. uh, don't do well. And most hybridizers agree on that point, that we have to have the hostas of the future have to be plants that are slug resistant, nice flowers, and look good late in the summer so that you don't, uh, so that you don't have to apologize for your garden right. in late summer. Yes. I'm so sorry it's getting to be fall. <laughs> All right, I wanted to show you how we use the uh, some other subtle colors with the hosta colors. Uh, I particularly like Japanese painted fern because of the of the silver and and light purple or lavender tones that are in it. Uh, it works so well with the yellows and, and yeah. deep greens of the hostas, uh, and it's just high enough to provide a backdrop. Uh, it's uh, being being relatively early in the season. It hasn't gained its full height yet. It'll become yeah. considerably higher. And if you notice the blue hosta in the background with it uh, is big and sets off all the other colors. Typically, how long would it take from the time that you begin the process to when it can actually be purchased by someone uh, in a garden center? That's a very center? popular question, and I get that a lot. Uh, it really depends on the plant. Uh, this little plant here, Pied Piper, has been registered. It took about five years to get that ready, but I knew the parentage of it, the plant it came from, so I had already some history to, to draw on. Okay. Uh, uh, on, on average, it takes me eight to nine years, but I've had plants for 12 or 14 years uh, working with them to make sure if there was something I didn't was hesitant about to make sure I didn't get them on the market. And at that, I will admit, I've made several mistakes. I wish I could pull those plants back <laughs> and forget I'd done them. So everybody does that. Every yeah. hybridizer can tell you a story about a plant he wishes he hadn't put on the market. This is the West Garden. Uh, and uh, this is the oldest part of the garden. So we have a lot of varieties over here. Uh, in the garden are over 800 varieties of named hostas and probably a thousand or so of my hybrids. So uh, we won't look at every hosta today. 
around that walnut tree, and incidentally that is around a black walnut, is, is a garden that is sculptured for the undulation effect. And if you look, you'll see we carefully plan so that the host is gradually raised and lower as though the soil underneath was, was sculptured or formed, and yet it's not, that's all flat under there. So it's one of the options we have with hostas. Uh, and you'll see as we go through this garden, now we use a lot of other things with the hostas. We mix the stilbies in, which are very effective. Uh, this is filled with spring bulbs, so there's masses of color here in the spring. Uh, and if nobody, no hardy souls get down here, I'm out here enjoying it. <laughs> That's uh, good. <laughs> and, uh, and then we grow lilies in here. And we grow both Asiatic and, and the uh, Oriental lilies. Uh, and I probably should be whispering this because we don't want the lilies to know. People come and say, you can't grow lilies in the shade. But we don't let the lilies know about that. Oh, so, that they're in the shade. So, so, so they're happy as long as we don't give them the information. Uh, they go ahead and bloom anyway. Uh, so we have lilies in here and Is ferns. Yeah, and is there any plant that uh, you know doesn't like to be near hostas? Is there anything you need to be careful about if you're going to plant well, hostas? Well, you do have any any smaller plants are apt to be encroached on or overcome by the hostas, right. including weeds. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> uh, and uh, so there's an old adage: you only you only weed your hostas once a year. That's in the spring. After that, they fill and cover. I wish that was quite true. Uh, we don't characterize this as a maintenance-free plant, but it certainly lives up to its reputation as a low-maintenance plant. Right. Uh, and this garden is taken care of by me and when my wife has some time, uh, pretty much exclusively. Uh, it's a big garden, it's it covers garden, several acres, yeah. and we couldn't do this if this was a high maintenance garden. That, that is what we do with hostas, what we're doing with hostas, and, uh, and it's, 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 a lot of, it's a lot of fun for me. Uh, I, I think the people who come here and to other hosta gardens are finding this is a very interesting thing. Uh, and they're really getting results in their garden, which is important. Yeah. So this year, when you're thinking about trying something new in your garden, be sure and consider hostas. We discovered that by using a boulder and planting on the east side of it, we can about upgrade our zone one zone. Uh, we're zone six here, and I'm growing a zone seven to seven and a half plant right beside that boulder. So, uh, so a boulder, yeah, a boulder can give you something right, and the and the protection, and the and the the ability of the boulder to to modify rapid changes in temperature, uh, not just the heat but the cold, uh, so that it doesn't happen quickly. It's rapid changes in temperature that hurt plants a lot of the time. There are coffee pots, and there are coffee pots. If you want your Gardening for Real People coffee mug, which is microwavable and dishwasher safe, just send $8 plus $3 shipping and handling. Gardening for Real People, 560 Franklin Street, Buffalo, New York, 14202. You know, when you're done drinking coffee out of it, you might want to plant something in it. But remember to put some drainage holes in it first. It's about time you get off the couch, put down the remote, and get into shape. At One-on-One -on -one Health and Fitness Center, you can expect the latest in high-tech equipment, aerobics classes, and certified personal trainers. For a limited time only, get a one-year membership for only $119. One-on-one -on -one is a full-service facility with chiropractic services, nutritional programs, and babysitting services for members' children. You can expect the best from One-on-One, -on -one, Western New York's premier athletic club. If you've got some tips you're willing to share and you'd like us to visit your garden, just write to us at Gardening for Real People, 560 Franklin Street, Buffalo, New York, 14202. Include a picture of your garden with a self-addressed stamped envelope so we can return it. 
container growing has become tremendously popular. And keep in mind, anything can be a container. Here's a traditional pot. But remember, all you need to make something a container, make sure you have good drainage, use a sterilized soil mixture, you're going to have to fertilize your plant, and you're going to probably have to water it more frequently than you would if it was in the ground. Here at Bill Weber's Greenhouses in Gardenville, they grow just about everything in containers, including this beautiful lettuce. And I think he's also got the ultimate in container growing this year. He's got some gorgeous purple wave petunias in an old toilet. Now this has everything you need. It's got good drainage, he's used a sterilized soil, he keeps it well watered, and wouldn't this be a beautiful addition to your backyard? This year I've got some flowers in my garden that I really like. So what I'm going to do is take cuttings of them so that I can repeat the same flower in my garden next season. Now you can do this with coleus or impatience. I'm going to do it with some vinca and it's really easy. All you do is cut a piece of the stem off of the plant, pull the lower leaves off of the stem and any little shoots, and then just stick this in a little glass of water. In a couple of weeks, you'll see roots sprouting from beneath that cutting, and then what you do is just put it in a pot, keep it in a pot in the house through the winter, feed it, water it, and next spring when it's time to come back in the garden, I'll put this in the garden and I'll be able to have the same pretty flowers that I enjoyed so much this year. I'll have them again next year. RadioPeople.com So we see you again. Get down, get dirty, go gardening. That's all I have to say, so he'll just have to stretch. <laughs> Have you ever dreamed of living in your own log home? Country's Best Log Homes magazine can make your dream a reality. Each issue, our experts give you the practical guidance you need to plan your dream log home, how to pick the log home package that's right for you, how to decorate your log home. We'll give you ideas for log home kitchens, luxurious baths, warm living rooms, intimate bedrooms, and there's more. Our financial experts will help you find the best log home mortgage. Our building experts will advise on how to design your home for maximum energy efficiency. Order your subscription to Country's Best Log Homes now. You'll receive a full year of Country's Best Log Homes magazine, including our 300-page annual buyer's guide and model home directory, all for only $19.95. But that's not all. As a free bonus, we'll send you this log home planner kit for ordering now. So call right now to get your subscription, including our 300-page annual buyer's guide, a total of six issues, plus your free log home planning kit, all for only $19.95. It's about time you get off the couch, put down the remote, and get into shape. At One-on-One -on -one Health and Fitness Center, you can expect the latest in high-tech equipment, aerobics classes, and certified personal trainers. For a limited time only, get a one-year membership for only $119. One-on-one -on -one is a full-service facility with chiropractic services, nutritional programs, and babysitting services for members' children. You can expect the best from One-on-One, -on -one, Western New York's premier athletic club.